Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and a very good day. I hope all of you are doing well. Today we are going to continue our lecture on research methodology. For today's topic, we are going to go through the research writing, how to write a review paper. First of all, all of you have already know that in research, you are having difficulties in terms of producing the outcome. And one of the outcome that you are going to produce is basically the journal publication. And for today's topic, I'm going to share with you in terms of how to prepare a good review paper. This is an example of my very own review paper that being published uh, in a couple of years back. And for this particular paper, it is uh, published in year 2020 and the general impact factor is 4.42. And uh, just to note that it is a Q1 paper. Q1 means it is a highly uh, cited journal and it is ranked at the top 25%. In terms of the uh, title for this particular paper, it is called Hybrid Nanofluid Flow and Heat Transfer Over Backward and Forward Steps, a review. As I said, for today's subject we are going to look into a review paper so in terms of the publication this uh, paper being cited in um, scopus is already being cited uh, 17 times as well in google 18 times what do we mean by that this means that this particular review paper even though it is published in the year 2020 it has been referred by many authors in year 2020 and the number will grow hopefully in 2021 and the years ahead let us look into another example this is one example of my publication it is published in Q3 journal and it is low in citation most likely because of the nature of the work being done and it is about coconut shell powder and uh, we look into the review on the preparation processing and catheterization so this particular journal is also um, having a high impact factor 1.529 and it is called Journal of Thermoplastic Composite Materials. The next one is published in year 2017. It is a Q1 journal. Again, the, it is, uh, the publisher is Elsevier. It is called the Renewable and Sustainable Energy Review. As we can see here, the paper talks on review of force convection nanofluids through corrugated facing step and this is one of my PhD student Dr. Kafil Muhammad and it has been cited many times in Scopus as well as in Google. Another journal that we published way back in 2016 it is, it's a Q2 journal and uh, the journal is called bioresources.com and the title of the paper is a review on tensile properties of bamboo fiber reinforced polymer composites as you can see here as the journal or the article getting uh, more years meaning that let's say this is 2016 it has been cited many more times, 34 times in Scopus and 45 times 
in Google. Now, there's, a, there's another uh, article that we published in year 2016, but having much more higher citation. So this is uh, another article that we published in Renewable and Sustainable Energy Review. This is also Q1 journal, very high impact factor, which has 8.050. Okay, uh, the, the title of the paper is a review of the effect of hydrogen addition on the performance and emissions of the compression. In this case, the case study is ignition engine. Okay, as you can see here, it has been cited 35 times in Scopus and 48 times in Google. Maybe some of you are curious why uh, the numbers are different uh, in Scopus and is as well as in Google. The um, engine behind both um, databases are slightly different, okay, where Scopus only take the papers that are being cited within their databases, whereas Google, they have a different ways of calculation where it count other uh, non-cited journals that cite your articles. That's why you can see there are huge difference, but there are cases the difference is only very small. Another article that we managed to clock in many citation, right? This is another good example, even though it is at Q3 journal, right? But it is uh, being cited more than 100 times in Scopus and 127 times in Google. And the citation are still increasing even in year 2021. And the general impact factor for this publisher Hindawi is only 0 0.897 in year 2013 but the impact of the article is huge where we can see clearly from here there are many researchers citing this particular article the title is aerogels in aerospace and overview okay and the last one is an article that we produce in the year 2010 right it is a q2 journal the title is the basic and issues of thermochromic liquid crystal calibrations so you can see here this is coming from a very good impact factor journal experimental thermal and free science and it has been cited 65 times in scopus and 92 times in google as you can see from various Q1, Q2, Q3, of course we have Q4, but I, I, I have not managed to um, submit to any of the Q4 uh, journals. But anyway, the ranking of the journals does play some contributions in terms of how do you select your article to be published. And seeing the purpose of having a review article is that you want to make sure that your article is current, you are reviewing the uh, recent work as well as the previous work, but at the same time you want to, to show that there are some gaps in the study and that's where you are going to fill in the gap by producing a review paper. Later on, I will share with you in terms of the steps and methods to prepare a good review paper such as what we have done and shown to you just now. Let us look into one example from the review paper. As we can see here, this is uh, the title of the paper. Okay, this is the title. Title of the paper. It says the basics and issues of thermochromic liquid crystal calibration. If we run through the spam method, 
okay, where you have the subject under study, you have the problems, you have the achievements, and you have the methodology, right? In this particular case, we do not put the methodology here, right? What we have here, the basic and issues are the achievement, meaning that this particular paper will share the basics, the fundamentals, and the problems of what? Basically, it is talking about the system under study, which is the thermochromic liquid crystal in this particular case, and the problems basically are the calibration, right? So, if you look at the title, it has the component of the S, the P, and the A, and if you basically, if you just read through the overall title, you already know that this particular article is a review paper. All right. So this, uh, the, the methodology, basically, it is a review article. Now, let us look into the abstract. What are the components of an abstract? The rules stays the same. For a review paper or any technical paper, you have these five elements. An abstract should have an introduction. It need to have objective of the paper, of course, the methodology or the approach. And next, we have the significant results or findings. And finally, the conclusion, right? So if we can see here, from the right up, the, the abstract is quite concise. It is a summary of the work. Let us read through. In terms of the introduction, thermochromic liquid crystals or TLCs, okay, you introduce the acronym TLC because you are going to use it again and again throughout the text, which have been widely used by researchers in heat transfer and fluid flow communities as thermal imaging tool for mapping surface and spatial temperature distributions. So that's the first sentence, eh? first element of the, of the, this is the first elements or the sentence for the introduction. And next you have the same wording, continue in the introduction section. In order to utilize TLCs, which is the thermochromic liquid crystals, for the quantitative temperature measurements, calibration is first necessary to determine the color temperature relationship of TLC. So, as we can see here, this is the second part of the introduction. So, introduction one introduction sentence number two so there are only two sentences for the introduction then the authors go into the objective this paper is aimed to provide novice and intermediate users of tlc's with a review on the basics and issues right say so it mentioned about the achievement in the objective that what they want they intend to do Pertaining to calibrations of TLC, particularly for surface thermography, only one sentence of the objective. Maybe you are uh, try to wonder, oh, uh, I have three objectives, Prof. Rahim. So, how am I going to put it there? You may just write the general objective. Okay, as I have already told you before in our previous lecture, how to write an objective. You have the general objective, you have a specific objective so normally in this particular abstract because we want to be very concise you may put up the general objective like this particular case only one sentence for the objective so as we can maybe i put it here for the uh, introduction we have we have one and two but for the objective we only have one sentence next we go into the methodology over here a general overview of tlc's the basic elements of a tlc calibration rig 
and the common calibration method of TLC are described. This is the methodology, right? So still, it is only one sentence. Just clearly say that these are the methodology or the approach. And then the results. These are the main body of the article. The crucial issues associated with calibrations of TLCs, namely imaging, colorimetry, illumination, hysteresis, film thickness and aging, and methods used to compensate for these effects are discussed. Again, it is only one sentence, but it consists of many things. We do not display or describe the findings because it is a, it is a review paper. Okay, so we just highlight what are the gist of it, what are the main important elements of the results over here. That's why it's only one sentence. And then finally, the conclusion, only one sentence again, right? You have this paper is intended to provide useful information to novice and intermediate users of TLCs, particularly on TLC calibration. So in total, you have one, two, three, four, five, seven sentences. In the abstract, you have only seven sentences that tell the whole story of your work. Okay, so let us move on to the next section, which is the introduction. In the introduction section, normally you will have roughly three to five paragraph. What is it inside the paragraph? Okay, so if you look back or refer back to your K chart, you in the first paragraph, you will talk about the first layer. So we call this as the the first layer. Okay, so this is the first layer. And then you, you have the second layer or second issue. You zoom in and then finally you have the, the third layer. Okay, third issue. Right. So, as we can see here, the first paragraph normally talk about the general overview, right? For this particular case, it is known that solution to heat transfer problem have led to the development of sophisticated thermal control system and so on. So, they talk about general and then they zoom in into the application of thermochromic liquid crystals and highlight some uh, research ongoing or past uh, research relevant to the work and then uh, finally in the third paragraph maybe if you have more layers in your k chart you may want to have maybe paragraph number four and paragraph number five okay? that zoom in into more specific topic but more importantly is that in the final paragraph, either it is paragraph number three or paragraph number five, you then highlight the methodology where you explain the section, section two, what is it being uh, discussed, section three, section four till section nine, talking about what. Okay. So um, over here, also, they highlight the objective. So you have the objective over there. Okay? The objective that this paper is aimed to provide novice and intermediate users with a review on the basic and issues pertaining to calibration of TLC. So this is an example of a three paragraph introduction. You do not have to put very long paragraph. Some students uh, make uh, common mistakes where they put up 10 paragraph into, into the introduction and they fail to highlight the objectives as well as the methodology that they have taken. And to follow through the final 
paragraph. This is a continuation from the previous slide. At the end of the introduction section, you put up the expected results. Over here, this paper is intended to provide useful information. Okay, you can have the same wording as your abstract. Okay. Moving into the body of the article, into the results and discussion, right? Uh, every results must have the followings. Normally, when we talk about um, results, oops, when we talk about results, you talk about the trends. And the first item, you have to talk about the trend. What is seen from the literature description of the results normally you put five sentences i like to put use this as a guideline and you can have four you can have six but normally uh, just try to as a training you start with five sentences to sh to describe the trend of the result and then you follow it by having a justifications you need to explain the results not just reporting what's being done what happened and uh, what are, what is the results you need to explain the results probably two to three sentences or three to four sentences will do and finally to wrap up your discussion for a particular result you need to do uh, some support where provide comparison or findings from other researchers maybe one or two sentences or two to three sentences so this is what we call as the critical review right so it's not just reporting you are also analyzing the data because remember doing a literature review or a review paper you are analyzing other people's work and try to find the gaps in the knowledge so each time you have a paragraph you must have this component right you have the trend you have the justification you also have the support or the critical on what's happening some data are contradicting with one another so you may want to discuss or oh, this this group of researchers reporting this way and another group of researchers reporting another point of view and you are not trying to find faults from others but you are trying to do some analysis and there are rooms for other people or maybe you to contribute to the knowledge let us move on to the conclusion part and how to write a conclusion for a review paper in the conclusion section you need to highlight the main findings right so the main finding means that uh, in this particular paper a review on the basics and the issues pertaining to calibration of TLC has been presented a general overview you of the TLC the basic element are being described and the crucial issues have been addressed right these are the item sorry imaging colorimetry illumination hysteresis film thickness and aging so those are the things important things that being highlighted so i when i read this particular paragraph i do expect that would be one two three four five and six main conclusion so we expect there are six results main results right so this should also correspond to the uh, section in the results and discussion so you the particular author probably has six main uh, results being discussed and in the conclusion i do expect you have a minimum six conclusion so let us see here the first one imaging okay, so the first um, result is about imaging the second one is about illumination right and then you move on into talking about the uh, different variation of illumination angles right and then talking about the hysteresis and then number five 
about film thickness. And then number six, finally, okay, it talk about the calibration. All right. So those are the six um, conclusion from the previous paper. Okay. Let us now look into another recent paper published in year 2020. And we try to go through the same thing so that you can see and feel in terms of how to do a re review paper on your very own. Let us, let us to look into the second example. Again, the title, right? So you have the spam, S P A M. Okay, we have the system under study, S. We have the P problem. We have the achievement, doesn't mention here, but at the same time, you have the methodology, okay? In this example, the title of the article is Hybrid Nanofluid Flow and Heat Transfer Over Backward and Forward Steps. A review. So the system under study basically talking about hybrid nanofluid. So you are expecting in this particular paper, there will be a discussion. They are talking about hybrid nanofluid, right? And there are pe people say that, oh, probably the system under study is backward and forward steps, right? So what we call it as the BFS, backward facing step or forward facing step. That can also be um, a subject under study. Okay, the problem here is talking about the flow and the heat transfer. So you do expect there are results related to the nature of the flow, the behavior of the flow, and also result on the heat transfer. And finally, the methodology is about doing a review. Okay, so we have seen two type art example of title. Later on, you are going to do your own title for your review paper. Let us now look into the abstract section. I hope you still remember the point. Okay, in the previous example, they have seven sentences, but how about in this particular example? Look at the introduction. They have the first section. The first section is the introduction. This work describes the recent progress in the improvement of heat transfer through micro scale facing step. Only one sentence. The previous one, previous example, you have two sentences. Now, look into the second sentence. It straight away goes into the objective. This analysis includes previous studies that aim to improve heat transfer with and without hybrid nanofluid. So that, that is also, we can say that the second element, you also have one sentence. The third one is the methodology. Okay, you can see here the methodology. This review present the experimental and numerical results on the usage of hybrid nanofluid. That's one already. Okay, you have the methodology that have one sentence and then it continues furthermore because it break into into the second section this work introduces the use of bfs backward facing step forward facing step and micro scale steps with different flow regimes and working fluid so again it is okay to have a slightly different method where you have two sentences instead of one. And then we continue to the results. This study reveals an increase in heat transfer by utilizing hybrid nanofluid as a working fluid and an improvement in the coefficient of heat transfer when the nanoparticle volumes and concentrations of hybrid nanofluids increase. So you can see that the results only having one sentence right and finally the conclusion 
This work points out the studies on hybrid nanofits over BFS and FFS describes various nano nanoparticles used on the basic of thermal conductivity and show the improvement in the rate of heat transfer. This study also outlined the discussion and future direction of the current review. The fifth element of the abstract is a conclusion and we can see clearly there are two sentences. Altogether, we have five elements but we have end up to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey, this particular abstract has seven sentences, right? So in the previous article, it has six sentences. But more importantly, the elements of the abstract is fulfilled, right? So the elements are being fulfilled and in most of the journal article that we send, they require 200 words. Okay, strictly 200 words. There are cases, uh, the journal uh, requires 250 or sometimes 150 wordings only. So you have to make it very concise and to fit the general requirement. Now, let us look into the introduction section. In this particular example, we have six paragraphs. As I said before, you may have three to five, but having six is also okay. But make sure the flow from one paragraph to another paragraph, it continues nicely. Okay, there is a continuation of the story, right? For example, in this particular case, in the first paragraph, they are talking about the general overview. And then looking into the second paragraph, now we are already going into the BFS and FFS cases. And the third paragraph talking about the nanofluid. And then number four is talking about the effect of volume fraction. Number five, talking about the flow separation and then they start to introduce the objective so we have the objective over here the aim of the paper is to summarize the results obtained from different studies in terms of the effect of different parameters of the flow fluid and characteristic of the transfer so these two elements are being highlighted in the title because that is the main aim of the study fluid flow and heat transfer and then they put up the methodology okay we have the methodology over here and finally the expected results okay in terms of the conclusion right so in this research normally they have that like a summary one paragraph a summary of the findings okay and this work outline recent development of experimental as well as numerical right so there are four conclusion over here number one number two number three and number four okay you can either use a b c d or you can use roman i um, like like this right roman uh, numerals right okay okay it depends on the general format Okay, with that, I hope you have now learned or understand the steps taken to build a good review paper and it hope that it will help you in terms of doing your final assignment, which is producing a review paper. If you have any question, feel free to comment on the YouTube link or you can always WhatsApp me for further discussion. With that, stay safe till we meet again. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Bye-bye for now.